Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Gospel Truth with Dr. Demetrius Robinson. I thank you for tuning in all four sessions of our um, session that we talked about the kingdom faith. Session one, we talked about the measure of faith. Session two, we talked about having the God kind of faith. Last week, we were talking about now faith. And to culminate and to finish this series, we're going to talk about according to your faith, according to your faith. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, O oh God. Father, we thank you for yet another time of sharing. Father, we thank you for just downloading into our spirits the God kind of faith. Thank you for teaching us how to operate in the faith that Christ had on this earth. Thank you for allowing us to come to understand and to know that we have the God kind of faith and that we can fit and function and operate just as Christ operated in this earth realm. And Father, I pray that as we culminate this series, allow us to come to the revelation knowledge that it is your will that we exercise the God kind of faith on earth so that we can achieve the same results that Jesus achieved. And Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Today we're going to talk about according to your faith. According to your faith. And let's begin in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. The word of God says this. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Again, verse 29 says, Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Let's have another witness in the book of Luke chapter 1. The word of God says this in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 37 and 38. It says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's read that again. For with God, verse number 37 of Luke chapter 1, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let me ask you a simple question. What do you desire from the Lord above all else? And do you believe that the thing you desire, he is able to? To do. Let's just take this faith test right now. What is the one thing that you desire from the Lord? Do you believe that he is able to do it? Because the way you answer this question will be the way that God responds to your desires and to your needs. If the answer is yes, you do believe. Then let me pose this final question to you. Do you have the faith 
to believe that God is going to answer that prayer. And see, no one but you can answer this question because as we have found out here, Jesus asked these blind men, do you believe I'm able to do it? God put the question of their healing on them. We are placing our healings and we're placing our deliverance and we're placing our salvations and we're placing the things that we're desiring. We're placing the onus on God. The onus is not on God. The Bible says that with God, nothing is impossible. The problem is, can he find someone in the earth realm that will believe what he said in the heavens? Jesus said, when we pray to believe, Jesus said, when we pray to say our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. There has to be an agreement on earth with what heaven is speaking. That's where your faith comes in. And it's always personal. Just like faith has always to be now, faith always has to be personal. God in his infinite wisdom would not allow your destiny, would not allow the things that he wants to do in your life. He would not allow it to be dictated and held up by someone else. That's why he says faith has to be personal. It has to be when you agree with what God is saying, that's when God will move on your behalf. He's not going to leave it up to your bishop. He's not going to leave it up to your pastor. He's not going to leave it up to your spouse having to agree. He's not going to leave it up to anyone else to agree. All you have to do is say, like Mary says, be it unto me according to to your word. And when you align yourself with the word of God, and when you align your faith with the power of God, the Bible says, as soon as Mary said that the angel departed and began to make the things happen in her life. You have angels that are assigned to you. They're waiting for you to use the kingdom language. And the kingdom language is faith. And when you begin to speak in faith, you got angels that are sent to make those things come to pass in your life. Hmm. No wonder some of our angels feel unemployed because they don't hear the kingdom sound. They don't hear kingdom faith. They only respond to kingdom faith. They only move when they hear the word of God believed and spoken out of the believer's mouth. Jesus spoke to these two blind men and he simply asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And when Jesus touched their eyes, he didn't say my faith has made thee whole. He says, according to your faith, be healed. The ball's in your court. You got to pick the ball up and shoot. That's the only way you'll score. Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And if you have faith, Jesus said, as we read before in the book of Mark, he says, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And he says, if you don't doubt in your heart, but if you believe the things which you say shall come to pass, the word of God says you can have whatsoever you say. as we're bringing our sessions to a close and as we are honing in and 
solidifying the word of God as it concerns faith. God says it can be unto you according to your faith. And you don't even have to pray for faith because the Bible says in Romans 12, chapter three, he's already dealt to you the measure of faith. You already have what it takes to be successful. Will you now take that faith and put it to work? What is works? Works is only corresponding actions to what you believe. Your corresponding actions have to, you got to move on what you believe. And when you move on what you believe, your faith is activated in your movement. A lot of us say we believe, but we don't ever do anything. We don't ever say anything. We just say, I believe. Believe what? James says, show me your faith and I'll show you works. I'll show you faith with works. And James says faith without works is dead. Meaning it has no power. It has no life. Your faith doesn't have any life until you put corresponding actions with your faith. You got to get up and do something. You got to say something. You got to put your faith into action. And when you put your faith into action, the Bible says that whatever you say and whatever you're speaking to, it has to move. The mountain has to move. Why? Because it's according to your faith. When you begin to rise up in who you are, when you begin to believe in who you are. That's why the enemy, his main job is to steal your identity. His main job is to have you not believing who you are. His main job is to have you walking around sad and depressed and, and acting like a mere man. And Paul says, you're not a mere man, but you are a peculiar person. You are a royal priesthood. You are a king and a priest. And only a king can make a decree. And a decree is whatever is spoken from the mouth of a king, it now becomes law. But Satan has fooled you and he has tricked you into not believing that you are a king and he has you speaking things over your life that are not godly and those things are becoming law in your life. Because he knows you're a king, but he don't want you to understand that you are a king. So when questions and things happen, when things are happening in your life, Christ is telling you, if you believe it shall come to pass according to your faith, it shall be. But we begin to betray our faith with our mouth because people ask, how are you doing? Oh, child, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You just made a law in your life. You ain't going to make it. Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And it says those that love it will live thereby. You have power in your mouth. God is a speaking God. He has made you a speaking creation that you can bring things into existence. You can cause things to come. Why? By the exercise of your faith. I pray today that you begin to exercise your faith. I pray that you will begin to do just like the blind men did. You will begin to do just like Mary did. Mary said, listen, I don't have to see everything. Just according to your word, be it unto me. You got to have the same amount of faith. To, I don't care what the reports look like. I don't care what the diagnosis says. Your faith is in God and your faith is in what God has said. God has said that you are already healed by his stripes. You got to begin to confess what God says. It's when heaven agrees, it's when earth agrees with heaven that movement happens. 
Your faith is in your hands. God has already given you everything you need to be successful. You already got it. I want you to rise up in your spirit. I want you to understand that I already got it. Whatever I need to be successful in this life, I got it. What I need to please God, I got it. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. That's why before the foundation of the world, Ephesians said he blessed you with all blessings. He already gave it to you before you even step foot on this earth. Why? Because it will be wrong of God to expect something out of you he didn't give you or he didn't give you the ability to do it. You have the ability to please him. Why? Because he already gave you the faith to do it. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please him because he that cometh to him must believe that he is. He is what? He is whatever you need him to be when you need him to be it. He's, God is. God is healing. God is the substance. God is finances. God is whatever you need him to be. The Bible says you got to come to him knowing that he is. He's a blank check. You fill in the blanks. He's whatever you need him to be when you need him to be it. Moses, when he came to God, he started stuttering. Now, 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 God, who, who, who am I going to say sent me? God had to stop for a moment and he had to think how omniscient he was. He had to think how all powerful he was. He had to think that he was Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sick Canoe, Jehovah M. Kadesh. He thought about he was the all breasted one. He was Elohim. He just said, Moses, go and tell him I am that I am. He says, I'm whatever you need me to be. When you need me to be it, I am. If you need finances, I am finances. If you need healing, I am healing. If you need deliverance, I am deliverance. God said, I am that I am. That's why you can have faith because God is, I am. He'll be whatever you need him to be when you need it. He's awesome in all his ways. He's trying to let you know that if you rise up with faith, the I am is right there. He'll do what needs to be done in your life if you simply have faith. And I come today to tell you to rise up in your faith. Rise up in the understanding to know that God is God. And beside him, there is no other. He don't need nobody on the side of him because he's God. He don't need any help from the left or the right. He's God. He's the I am that I am. And he says that you got to come to him believing that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many of you are seeking God today? You got to understand that he is whatever you're seeking him for. And then you got to understand that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is everything you need him to be. He will do everything that you need him to do if you simply ask, if you simply pray and say, God, You are everything I need. And I rise up in faith. And I believe that you are. And I believe that when I come to you in faith, you're not going to turn me away. But you'll give me the things that you have desired for me to have. And this is what we have to understand. The Bible says that God will give you the desires of your heart. 
That word in the Greek language means that God will give you what to want, not that God will give you what you want. Let me say that again. God says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. God will give you what to want. He's not going to always give you what you want, but he'll give you what to want. And when he gives you what to want, he'll always answer those prayers. Why? Because it's in line with what he wants. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 11, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that's going to prevail. So if your plans don't line up with God's purposes, guess who's going to win in the end? It's going to always be God's purpose. But if you believe, God will give you the desires of your heart because he knows your heart is in line with his heart. David was a man that was after God's own heart. And David messed up a whole lot, but he was after his heart. And God blessed him. He was the only king that routed all his enemies. Why? Because God blessed him. And if you do what God says to do, and if you have faith, and if you exercise the faith that you have that was given to you by God, God promised that everything, everything, everything that you ask according to his will, it shall be done. Bow your heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you, O oh God. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Father, I thank you that it is according to our faith. We can have whatsoever we desire because it's according to our faith. It's according to what you have called us to do and what you have called us to accomplish in this earth realm. Father, we can get the job done. We have everything that we need to be successful. We have everything we need to move forward in you. And Father, we thank you and Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to inform all my listeners and all my uh, friends and family that's in the Atlanta, Georgia area that the Atlanta Kingdom Conference is coming back your way. The Atlanta Kingdom Conference Part 2 will be November 12th through November 14th at the Atlanta Airport Marriott uh, Hotel. We will be in the grand ballrooms of the Atlanta Airport Marriott. We will be there November 12th, Thursday night. Our service will begin at 7 p.m. We'll be there Friday night, November 13th. Our service will begin at 7 p.m. and we will be there Saturday morning for workshops and for um, just trainings and teachings. We'll be there on uh, November 14th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can uh, register. The registration is only $25. You can register for the entire conference. You'll get all the conference materials. You'll get my latest book that will be out, Kingdom Education Volume 4. You will get all the information, all the materials. You can uh, sign up just by emailing me at Pastor Robinson at OneGodMinistry.org. You can sign up um, on Eventbrite, look for Atlanta Kingdom Conference. Just go to Eventbrite and type in Atlanta Kingdom Conference and you can sign up there. If you wanna sign up uh, by PayPal, you can sign up by PayPal. Um, the PayPal address is anointed, the number two, preach, anointed to preach. You can sign up there or you can sign up with Cash App. All you need to do is sign up with dollar sign OGM Milwaukee, dollar sign OGM Milwaukee. We will only be taking 
Uh, the first 100 that sign up, we're capping our conference at 100 because I want it to be intimate enough that we can spend time and that we can minister to each and every person that's there. Each and every person that comes, you will receive a prophetic word from the Lord. We will speak into your life. We will lay hands on you. We will activate you. We will impart you. So just come to the conference and be blessed. The first conference was an outstanding success and by popular demand, we are coming back for part two of the Atlanta Kingdom Conference. Again, that's November 12th through November 14th at the Atlanta Airport Marriott. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Gospel Truth presented by One God Ministry. I pray that the word that you just heard was a blessing to you. I just wanna share with you some of the media resources that we have available that I feel will be a blessing to you. We have our book, God is Just Trying to Get the Juice Out. If you ever been through anything in your life, if you ever have went through tests and trials and struggles, this book will be a blessing to you because it will show you that God is at work in your life and he's simply just squeezing you so that the juice will come out of you and that you'll taste good to those who are to drink from your life. We also have Kingdom 365, which is a devotional book of 365 days of nothing but the kingdom of God being shared with you and being downloaded in your spirit. This will be a good devotional book to keep the kingdom mindset in your life and that you will experience the kingdom of God every day of your life. Also, we have the keys of the kingdom, volume one. Christ came to give you keys and these keys are essential to unlocking the kingdom of God in your life. With the keys that Christ has given you, you can live what Christ left for us to live, and that is life and life more abundantly. Christ said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom, and this book will teach you all the keys that you can utilize in your life to open up the kingdom of heaven in your life. I wanna thank you again for tuning in and may God bless you and may he keep you is always my prayer.